Now, last month I reviewed this Tatcha tinted sunscreen for you guys, and so check that video out. It's not, you know, the most amazing sunscreen, but it works fine. Pricey, however. Anyways, I mentioned, you know, this was sent to me as a PR gift. In that package that came from Tatcha, they also sent me this, the clarifying clay mask, and I thought for fun we would try it out together. Looks like that. It came with a luxe looking plated Scoopy Doodle. It's pretty thick. Allegedly, it goes from green to red as it sets up. And I kind of can see that it's turning a little bit red here. So we're gonna let that sit on there for three to five minutes per the instructions. Clay masks, Kaolin, Bentonite, if you use them a few times a week, what they do is they help absorb so soil. They help absorb oil from the surface of the skin and from kind of within the pores. That can help degrease the skin. If you're prone to acne breakouts, that can help a little bit in controlling the frequency of breakouts. They can be drying, but a lot of these masks are formulated with moisturizing ingredients. Now, this particular product is $70. That is pretty steep. Uh, Cetaphil makes a great clay mask. Unlike this, it doesn't have any fragrance. Isentree also makes a really good mugwort clay mask that I rather enjoy. So for people who have really oily skin, they wake up in the morning, their face is like really shiny. This can be helpful. This particular clay mask also has niacinamide and I think it has licorice root. Um, I do these from time to time just for fun. I find them helpful actually. This one, I'm kind of getting a little bit of a warm sensation. I don't know what that is all about, but anyways, mask on. All right, so it's been about five minutes and I have to say, my face, I don't even feel like I have anything on it. Like a lot of times these clay masks, they start to feel really tight on the skin and this I'm not really getting that. So that's a little bit of a difference with this one. I'm actually gonna use a washcloth to remove it because I don't know this clay going in my sink. say it does work quite well to degrease the surface of the skin now honestly you can get the same exact effect with that Cetaphil clay mask fraction of the price a lot of times when I point out I don't think this is worth it in terms of the cost to outcome ratio people are like well what defines worth it the effect that you're going for with a product like this is to degrease the surface of the skin remove oils and for me, I can get that with a more affordable product. So why would I pay more for the same outcome? Now for other people, they're all into this like spa, like zen-like thing. They like having something like this on their countertop. They like the scent, which by the way, the scent was actually not too strong. It was kind of like a light citrus scent. They like the scent, they like the fragrance, they like the experience of it. They like the effect of the clay turning kind of reddish. I don't know. I mean, those things, if those things you enjoy, well, then, you know, you may be happy to plunk down $70. But for me personally, I just want to decrease the surface of my skin. I don't need all that other stuff. So for me, it's not worth it. And if you have fragrance allergies, then you would definitely want to avoid this one. The Cetaphil one is free of fragrance. Now I'm going to rinse my face. <laughs> I will say my face doesn't feel like super dried out or anything from it. So it's pretty good in that regard. Now I'm gonna put on, almost done here you guys, with my Rachinic cream from Xeroid, the Urea one. Actually, I think this is gonna be, yep, this is gonna be the last of it right here. Now a lot of people might think, you just tried to remove oil from the surface of the skin. Now you're coming in with a moisturizer. Yes, because the point of the moisturizer is to help hydrate the skin and reduce water loss out of the skin. Oil from your pores you know, it doesn't really do all that for you. And it just makes your skin greasy. And for people who are acne prone, it contributes to acne. Moisturizers actually help reduce flares of acne and help keep acne under control because as the barrier loses more water, well, that leads to more irritation and more aggravation of acne. But by using a moisturizer, you can kind of help that out a lot. 
And I do take this down to my neck. But one nice thing about doing the clay mask, just let that dry on there, absorb very quickly. One nice thing about doing the clay mask too, many people who have oily skin, they're bothered by the appearance of sunscreens on the skin because a lot of sunscreens already look shiny, but if you put them on oily skin, they'll look even shinier. So by doing a clay mask a couple of times a week, that may help the sunscreen go on a little bit more evenly. When I first started on YouTube, Glam Glow was all the rage and that is that still a thing like do people still do those masks like i think influencers would be sent glam glow mud masks and they looked fun they would rave about them but it was the same kind of thing like dude you could just get the same effect from an affordable clay mask um without all the gl the glam glow ones they would often have like all this glitter and stuff So the past month, I have not been going to the grocery store as much. I've been doing Instacart and I'm kind of loving it. Even though <clears throat> there is a markup, you know, you to pay the, you obviously tip the driver and everything. It, I think I end up spending less money because I don't impulse purchase. I used to use Instacart religiously when I lived in New York because <laughs> the cost of me transporting myself to the store and transporting myself back with all the groceries was a cost of Instacart. It was like, why am I gonna pay to get on the bus to go up to, cause I used to go to Costco in New York, I know. Um, and then Sherpa back with the big bags of Costco stuff. Why am I gonna do all that when for the same amount of money, I can just do Instacart. Now, the problem with Costco, I will caution you, if you do do Instacart, which is a little bit of an extra fee, is that as a Costco member, you pay for a membership. But if you end up using Instacart to get Costco stuff delivered, and I'm sure the same goes true with Sam's, the Instacart people, they have to pay for a Costco membership. So to compensate for that, they upcharge you on each of the, on the items. So at the cost of, say for example, almond milk at Costco, you're gonna pay more for that almond milk getting it through Instacart. And you're still gonna pay the Instacart like delivery fee and the Instacart, you know, you're gonna tip them or whatever. So it ends up being a lot more, but sometimes there it ended up being worth it regardless because food there is so expensive. That was what I hated about living in New York was just it, like, I found it so painful how much basic like things cost there. I just, I, I couldn't, that's why I left, honestly. Well, like one of the reasons why I didn't want to live there uh, because it was just like, why am I paying four times as much for nail polish that, you know, that it's just, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. And everything there is so much more expensive. I mean, everything costs a lot of money. Like waking up, they're like, that'll be $30, please. So I, yeah. Texas is pretty affordable, but if you're thinking about moving here, you need to be warned because people are like, oh, look how inexpensive the houses are. Because our houses, for across the country, like Houston, for example, the housing here, it's gone up in cost, but it's still considerably more affordable than a lot of other cities in the US. But what you have to factor in is a few things. You have to factor in taxes, taxes, the, the property tax here is high. And you also have to factor in where you are living in relationship to where you are working. Because if you think you're gonna move here and live in the suburbs and commute to work, you better talk to some people because you could be spending a lot of your life in agony and misery in Houston traffic. And that is not worth it, trust me. And you think, oh yeah, I don't mind sitting in traffic. I'll just put an audio book here. No, 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 no. That is not how our traffic goes here. That is not how traffic goes here. It's not a pleasant experience. You have to be on the, you have to be defensive. So what do you guys think? I mean, do, do you think my face looks any different doing that mask before my skincare routine? I don't know. It feels nice, I will say. It was a nice experience. It has kind of a calming zen effect. I don't know, probably all in my head, but $70, yikes, that's quite a bit. 
The Tatcha packaging too is like so weighty. It's like a baseball. Well, hey guys, I'm here in Target because I just filmed a video for you all, a Target shop with me, and I'm over here in the clothes. And what is this? In my coat of many colors that my mama made for me. Now I have a dress by this Knox. Is it Knox Rose? Yeah, yeah, Knox Rose. Very similar to this. I love it. I still wear it quite a bit. Um, it's quite comfortable. Yeah, the clothing in Target over the years is just, I don't know, it's not really something that I like. Oh, this little tote bag is cute. I can put it in the junior section though, but it's still cute. Ooh, looks like Target has these Stanley jugs like I've got. I love mine. Keeps the water cold. I always get tempted by these popsicle molds. I don't know why. Unicorn dust. All right, big surprise. I need coffee yet again, and I'm here in Target. Now that I've got my jazzy bean grinder, the world is my oyster. <laughs> Although, what is going on here? Spring day blend, dusted coconut, cocoa and dried fruit. I don't know that I want all that in my coffee. I don't trust Starbucks. They let me down so many times that I'm not going back. Kicking horse, is that any good? Blue Island. I've really been enjoying this. Blue bottle I should get. I've had the hologram from Counterculture and it was pretty good. But I'm thinking I might need to try another one. How is the Good and Gather coffee? So I kind of want to try this Blue Island Bikini Blend. I'm going to set it there so I can hold the camera. But you guys confirmed in the comments of a recent vlog where I was like, what is going on with the adhesive? Y'all were saying you've been having the same issue with the adhesive on coffee bags. And somebody said they thought it was related to the um, shortages and stuff, which makes sense. Maybe I should try Big Trouble. <laughs> I'm laughing at the name, it's funny. Caramel Nutty Round or Fast Forward. I enjoyed Hologram, but I wanna try something different. Ooh, Dark Chocolate Smoky Full Bodied. Might have to go with 46. Ah, time for another hot beverage. I'm coming in with the Peak Peach Ginger Black Tea. Their Ginger Digestion Elixir is one of my favorites. I haven't tried this one yet, but their black teas are pretty good. I can smell the peach already. This would be a good one uh, iced. Dissolves in a matter of moments. No steeping required. That's good. So it is about 5.15. I came out to enjoy the day because the weather is really nice. It's like pretty mild and warm. I get weirded out though when I wear these sun when I wear sunglasses because I can't see the viewfinder, so I don't know if I'm in the frame or not. But yeah, it's pleasant out. I would flip the camera around with their children out by the pool. Do not want to videotape that. Yeah, I always do my best to not include children in my footage or if they happen to be in there I try and crop them out but I snagged one of these little cabanas and I'm just zenning out looking at the clouds uh, I just decided to come out here and veg out the water seems pretty nice too I would take a dip but I don't really feel like putting my bathing suit on I think most people believe that when I talk about protecting your skin from the sun, they interpret that wrong. They interpret that as go in a cave, never go outside, never see the light of day. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you are outside, be smart and protect your skin. It's the largest organ. Wear a hat, long sleeves, sunglasses, for sure, to protect your eyes. and wear sunscreen, all of those things don't prevent you from enjoying the outdoors. I, you know, I'm a fan of being outside. I advocate for it, but that doesn't mean 
burn your skin or overexpose your skin to harmful UV rays, you know? Um, I think people misconstrue that. It's like, it's like if somebody told you that, you know, car fatalities peaked at a certain time of day, like, were more likely to happen. Our car fatalities are more likely to happen, like, I don't know, daylight savings time or something, which is true, actually. They are. Around daylight savings time, car fatalities are more common. That's not someone telling you, don't drive a car around daylight savings time. No, they're telling you, hey, be aware of this, so take precautions, obey the speed limit, wear your seatbelt. If you feel like you haven't been adjusted sleep-wise and you're sleep deprived, don't get behind the wheel. I mean, these are just ways to stay safe, but nobody's telling you don't drive. I would be willing to bet I spend more time outdoors than the average person who comments that I am phobic of the sun, which is not true at all. I pretty much go outside every day that I can. Some days I'm just busy and I don't, but I mean, that's most people. Most people work they're not like frolicking around in the sunshine or whatever like these woo-woo people make it out to seem like we all should be doing. Most people don't have time for that. You know, they have jobs, families. If you live somewhere that's cold, like the Midwest, you're not going to be outdoors in the middle of winter. Like, so yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, some people are avoiding the sun a lot. Now, come summertime, it is too miserable to be outside here is it because the humidity is so thick and that's typically when people make these comments that I stay inside and I fear the sun. These are people who have never set foot in Houston in July or August. Um, although I have to say I think I've gotten used to it and I tolerate it better than when I first moved here. I think you get tough to the humidity and stuff. It's kind of like if you live in a cold climate and then like people come to visit who aren't used to it and they complain, complain about the cold and you're like, hey, I'm tough, I can handle it. I feel like you kind of get that way living here. Like you don't, you start, you stop noticing the humidity, you just get acclimated to it. Oh, you guys, I just got out of the shower, did the majority of my skincare routine, including a total body slug, well, at least from the neck down. Um, and I put a little petrolatum to my eyelids and around my mouth because uh, I'm going to put my tretinoin on and tretinoin will not penetrate through like a petrolatum ointment. Uh, the reason I put it around my eyes and around my mouth if you're new here is because those areas are more prone to irritation from the tretinoin. But anyways, I just finished this Cetaphil healing ointment. I really liked this as a petrolatum ointment. It's got uh, shea butter in it as well as obviously petrolatum. Microcrystalline wax, which in my experience tends to make an ointment a little bit softer and more fast absorbing, stay less greasy. Por ejemplo, the, what was the brand I was using a couple of years ago? It's really good. It used to be on Amazon and then they kind of stopped carrying it. I'm blanking on what it's called. Theraplex, the Theraplex Barrier Balm. I love that stuff. This kind of reminds me of the Theraplex Barrier Balm. Um, but you may wonder, well, how does it compare to the CeraVe healing ointment? The CeraVe healing ointment has ceramides and hyaluronic acid, which help with the skin barrier and moisture retention. But just as far as aesthetics, in my experience, the CeraVe healing ointment has a more potent kind of hydrating plumping effect that goes along with the seal to trans epidermal water loss. And they differ a little bit in terms of the relative greasiness. Like this one, I think stays really shiny on the skin. This one is more fast absorbing. But this one, if you put it on your lips, it kind of gives them this like really hydrated, plumped up look that you, you kind of get with the Cetaphil one, but not to the same extent. I just have a hair stuck here to my leg, which is all lubricated up with ointment. Anyways. Yeah, so I, not only did I finish that, but this is another moisturizer. I'm really going through stuff. Um, I've been working on this and kind of took a break from it while 
I've been using the urea moisturizers mostly. This is the Cetaphil Rich Hydrating Cream. Love this. As the name implies, it is rich and hydrating, but it's, you know, it's a cream consistency, but it's a really fast absorbing. It almost kind of has a splash in the face kind of feel to it, as opposed to like a really dense consistency cream. But if you have really oily skin and you're dealing with like a lot of irritation, skin barrier issues, try this out because while it's marketed for people with dry, sensitive, normal to dry, sensitive skin, I think people with oily skin, you know, there's honestly, there's not much about a product that makes it for or against oily or oily skin per se. It's more, a you know, individual outcome, individualized outcome. But I think this one, if you have oily skin and you're dealing with a lot of irritation, you might actually like it. It is on the shiny side, but for a nighttime moisturizer, who cares, you know? I mean, it absorbs and whatever, like. So, Skin Cancer Awareness Month is on. Uh, I always forget, you know, that May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month because I'm always talking about, you know, protecting your skin from the sun to reduce the risk of skin cancer. And then boom, all of a sudden it's a month where everybody's like hyper-focused on it. If you didn't know, having five or more sunburns increases your risk of melanoma. But um, some people don't realize that a sunburn does not have to be like painful, blistering, or anything to contribute to that five count. It can just be a little bit of light pink. Oh, looks like you got a little bit too much sun, kind of a little tender or even. I mean, just the faintest pink, and that is a sunburn. That is damaged cells, because when you biopsy that, you're gonna have what are called sunburn cells. They're basically skin cells that have just given up, and they are, you know, a signature of UV damage, plus the UV rays they weaken the immune system. So yeah, sunburns, if you have young children, I'm telling you, do whatever you can to keep them from getting a sunburn. Honestly, you know, obviously it's kind of my shtick protecting your skin from the sun because I'm a dermatologist. I really wish public health efforts would put more effort into, you know, providing shade and coverage for young kids, young children, like they do in Australia. Man, in Australia, it is good. I think young children, you know, need good cover shade structures. And people are always like, well, don't you need some sun? They miss the point. Sun protective behaviors don't mean never going out in the sun. They mean protecting your skin while you are out in the sun. That includes shade, sunscreen, sun protective clothing. This doesn't mean that you're never like experiencing the sun or anything like that. Anyways, I really think that children should have more sun protection when they're outside and there should be you know more tools and resources like i see like i, I drive by um schools and i see kids out practicing for sports or whatever in the blistering sun here in texas it's like the uv index is always like 10 plus oh update on the tasha clay mask i've got to say you know obviously it's super expensive i don't think the outcome of removing oil is any different than the inexpensive cetaphil clay mask that i recommended or the isn't tree one also a great option but i did find that my skin today felt i don't know soft and and what and nice so this is a nice product other than you know i wish it weren't so expensive and it does have fragrance but I can't objectively say that it's like horrible or anything. I actually rather enjoyed it. So anyways, yeah, let me know in the comments. Do you do clay masks? Try the Isn't Tree one, it's quite good, as is that Cetaphil oil control one. Try those out, they're quite good. But I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.